At what point does a game franchise obtain its identity? Some games come fully formed pretty much right out of the gate, and you don't need to change anything, like with Tetris. Others gain massive popularity by making a massive change, like the shift from GTA 2 to GTA 3. But some gather acclaim by making just a few minor tweaks. Ratchet & Clank Going Commando is part of the latter. It only made a few changes that seemed small at first, but turned out to have a massive effect on the entire series that would remain a part of the franchise forever. But Going Commando isn't just the game that cemented the Ratchet & Clank legacy. It's also one of the best games to complete ever. You'll see what I mean when I complete Ratchet & Clank Going Commando. Hey everyone, and welcome to another brand new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. And I'm excited to jump back into Ratchet & Clank, the second game Going Commando. And in honor of this, I'm gonna do just what the title says. For this whole video, I'm Going Commando. Get it? Underwear, I'm gonna take it all off and what the, what the hell's going on? Congratulations, Gerard, you have won the award for most obvious joke. <laughs> wow, holy crap. I wasn't ex expecting this. Um, I have the speech prepared. Uh, there's just so many people to thank for this one. Uh, my family, everyone here at the company, except for Ted, but mostly I wanna thank Jeremy right here, the writer of this episode. Uh, he really went for this low hanging fruit of a joke. Thank you very much for giving me this non-existent award and writing this bit that people are going to make fun of for the next few years. You really had nothing better, huh? You couldn't... Just nothing, nothing... Nothing came... This, nothing creative, just this was it? No. Now, I personally came into the Ratchet & Clank series late, starting with the remake of the original and eventually playing the actual original only about a year ago. I had an absolute blast and thought it was an amazing start to a series. Sony must have agreed with me because they greenlit the sequel back in 2002, a whole five months before the original game released. Now that is some confidence. But I can see that the people over at Insomniac might have been worried about this. I mean, just look at the story of Going Commando. It starts off with the titular duo doing an interview sitting in recliners towards the end of their fame from the first game. Ratchet even says, I guess no one needs a hero right now. Enter Abercrombie Fizzwidget, founder of the Meg Corp company in the Bogon Galaxy. He teleports Ratchet and Clank to his headquarters to get their help. He needs Ratchet to rescue the protopet from a thief and Clank to be an accountant. This puts our heroes on their journey to saving the galaxy yet again. So it seems like Insomniac was actually worried about the success going to their heads. They didn't want to rest on their laurels. They wanted to make a better game, but they didn't want to make some big changes like Naughty Dog did with Jack 2. Insomniac kept the awesome base game they had made and made a few minor tweaks. And the changes made in Going Commando are what set the identity for the entire Ratchet & Clank series going forward. The first big change was with Ratchet himself. Insomniac felt like he came off as a bit of a jerk to Clank in the first game, and that he wasn't very unique. You see a lot of these changes in Going Commando. Now he is much more of a friend to Clank, but still tough enough to stand up for Clank and himself. He won't let you push them around, but he isn't a total dick either. They've also changed the voice actor to reflect this, and James Arnold Taylor has been performing Ratchet's voice ever since. This gave the duo much more staying power. They still had their jock and nerd sensibilities, but just a lot less grating. They were actually friends. Now another big change was the length of this game. A few critics thought that the first game was a bit too short, and Insomniac came for that one with both barrels blazing, not by forcing more grinding to happen, but by actually creating more content. There was a greater emphasis put on the maxi games, what the developers called the side missions. There was now a lot more variety in them and even more details. Heck, the Gladiator missions even got their own game. But Insomniac did not stop there. There was more to the main game as well, about 150% more. According to CEO Ted Price, they made the game 150% bigger by making the levels 150% bigger with a lot more exploration. Plus, the levels were more designed around the shooting and less around the platforming. Now, this isn't saying that the platforming is gone completely, but there was a lot more of a balance this time around. There's still awesome platforming sections, but now there are also some cool firefight sections. This became the most important change because this set the tone 
for how the series would be seen by the public. This wasn't a platformer with some shooting, it's a platformer and a third-person shooter. Insomniac didn't just come out making a big swing for the fences. They made minor quality-of-life changes that not only created an overall better product, but cemented the identity of the entire franchise, and I can relate to that. The Completionist is a project that is constantly making slight changes and cuts to make for, in my opinion, overall better content, and will continue to do so for as long as I do this show. I mean, come on, we're about to celebrate 400 episodes. We have to make some changes. It's a big reason why we don't do half ratings anymore. Sorry for the interruption, everyone, but we're going to shift real quick the discussion from Rapid Gunplay and Collectibles to our sponsor today, the free-to-play tactical MMO, Conqueror's Blade, which just started its sixth season. The Scourge of Winter is now available as a free update. Conqueror's Blade is a grand clash of arms and cultures, allowing players to customize powerful commanders with 11 unique weapon classes and skills specific to those weapons, like cool blades bleeding an enemy out or exploding arrows from your bow. In Conqueror's Blade, you can control 80 diverse ranged melee and cavalry units, all from history's greatest military might. Defend or storm castles. And with this new season, players in North America have dedicated Cloudwing Valley and Eagle Range servers for the West and East Coast, respectively, to ensure that everyone can enjoy a more stable experience with every battle your army takes part in. Beyond that, with the sixth season, Battle Pass offers Archon Hero attire, 11 weapon skins, and slick new variants on classic armor sets. Plus, you'll instantly unlock the Desecrator's Hero attire, which, let's be real, if you're a warlord and you're called the Desecrator, you gotta have some respect for the cool skin. So, dive into the frigid chill of Season 6 of Conqueror's Blade on new East and West Coast servers, and hey, if you sign up today using the code in the box down below, you'll get a free 7-day premium account. Once again, thank you to Conqueror's Blade for sponsoring today's video. Back to the show. Alright, so I briefly mentioned the gunplay in the intro because I wanted to dive more into it here. The gunning parts of Ratchet & Clank weren't bad, they were chaotic and a ton of fun. The series moved more towards strategy and put a bigger emphasis on variety of weapons. And it's these choices that turned Ratchet & Clank from a game series into a franchise. Now, the first changes seem really small, but it had a huge effect on my enjoyment of the gameplay. Strafing. In the original, I didn't always feel like I was in control of what I was doing. It was a lot of jumping, shooting, and praying. Now that I can strafe, I get to decide what I'm shooting at and how I'm going to approach it. This is supported in the levels by having a lot more barriers to hide behind and having much more interesting layouts. Take the Silver City level, for example. There are a lot of branching pathways with a combination of open and narrow areas to battle baddies in. There are also a lot of sections that really utilize the gravity boots, making for some really interesting combat sections. And these strafing techniques have gone on to appear in every Ratchet & Clank game afterwards. In order to make the most of this, Ratchet & Clank Going Commando gave the player a lot more weapon options, and I was so happy about this. In the original, they were fun and did their jobs well, but I was a bit dissatisfied. I started the series with the Ratchet & Clank remake, and the weapons were much more fun and useful. And this change started with the weapons in Going Commando. Now, I love just about every weapon in this game. They're all useful in completely different scenarios. For instance, I could use the Pulse Rifle to take out enemies from far away, take out a large group of enemies with the Gravity Bomb, or scout ahead with the Spider Bot. My personal favorite weapons in this game are the Bouncer and the Sheepinator. The Bouncer is the perfect answer for bosses by turning a big bomb into a bunch of little bombs that bounce around and home in on enemies. The Sheepinator uses no ammo and turns enemies into... Well, you guessed it, sheep. And you know what? Maybe you like the old weapons from the previous Ratchet & Clank games better. I get it, nostalgia is strong. Fortunately, you can easily get access to these in the Gadgetron store pretty early on in your journey. And if you have your Ratchet & Clank save file, all of the original weapons are available for free. None of them are really necessary or useful, but this is an awesome addition for fans of the original. Not to mention that this also became a trend for the rest of the series. All of this gives you access to a total of 24 weapons, compared to the 14 you'd get in the original. With the first game, you essentially just got weapons that did more damage and had bigger explosions. Yeah, there was some utility here or there, but not nearly as specific as with Going Commando. I can now approach every combat scenario in numerous different ways. Plus, you can mod these weapons with platinum bolts, similar to the gold bolts from the original game. These add on different effects like lock-on, poison, and even a shock effect to hit nearby enemies. There's just so many more combat options 
for what you can do. Now, the most important change comes from the leveling system. The original Ratchet and Clank gave you the option to buy gold versions of weapons after you beat the game once, and this was the only upgrade you got. Yet, in going commando, weapons upgrade themselves based on how many enemies you've killed with that weapon. These upgrades make your weapons much more powerful and take on cool, interesting effects. This change not only makes you more personally invested in the weapons themselves, but also compels you to constantly switch your weapons in order to level all of them up. This way, you'll never get bored of doing the same thing over and over. There will always be new weapons to try. This leveling system was also applied to your health or nanotech. As you kill more enemies, you increase your health, and you have so much more of it. You can get your maximum nanotech to 80 compared to 8 in the first game. This supports the strategic combat even more by giving you more chances to experiment. If you make a mistake, it's not certain death. It's a learning experience. The original Ratchet and Clank was a ton of fun with its chaotic battles, but it didn't feel totally satisfying. Going Commando makes a few minor tweaks to take the combat to the next level, giving the whole Ratchet and Clank series the fun run and gun gameplay that make it so unbelievably popular to this day. It is very easy to get bored in a game when you're doing the same thing over and over again. This is especially true for single-player games. Just look at Panda Dragoon Remake. But Ratchet & Clank Going Commando does something miraculous. It actually gets better the more you play it. Now, it seems basic at first with a bunch of hard-to-find collectibles and the maxi games. For the collectibles, you have the Platinum Bolts, Skill Points, and Nanotech Boosts. Platinum Bolts and Nanotech Boosts are found by exploring the levels and help boost your weapons and health respectively. Sometimes these are right in your sight and you have to figure out the best way to reach them. Other times they are hidden behind breakable scenery that leads you down a longer path. This serves as a great way to break up the firefights and focus more on some classic exploration and platforming. The skill points provide the same effect, but are much more cryptic and harder to figure out. Or they would be if I wasn't playing the game on the PS3. Almost every single skill point is also a trophy, and they tell you how to get them in the trophy description. These skill points are used to unlock cheat codes. Now these are unlocked every five skill points and add even more to the replayability. If I was ever bored, I would just turn on some cheats and make Ratchet a clown or give the enemies big heads. I even inverted the levels for my entire second playthrough just to make it still seem fresh. I love constantly getting rewarded with fun, superficial stuff. In terms of the maxi games, you have a lot more options. You can battle giant robots on some planets as giant clank, or engage in multiple space battles in your ship. Also, the hoverboard races from the first game have been replaced with hover bike races. These are just challenging enough and made me realize how much I want a kart racer of Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter. And no, Jack X does not count. But the newest extra missions are also the best. Gladiatorial mode. Galactic Gladiators and the MegCorp games are combat missions where our heroes would take on different combat scenarios for gadgets and bolts, the main currency of the game. These include being forced to use a specific weapon, time trials, and special boss battles. Now, every time you beat a challenge, a newer, more difficult one unlocks until you get the impossible challenge where you have to take on 60 waves of enemies and a gnarly final boss. Now, how could I not want to take that one on? Plus, you get even more gladiator missions when you enter challenge mode. Now, wait a minute, I hear you crying. What is challenge mode? Well, it's the final piece of our perfect completion puzzle. You unlock challenge mode when you first beat the game. You get to start over, but keep all of your weapons, health, and bolts. However, all of the enemies take more hits and hit you much harder. But with all of this risk comes an awesome reward. Challenge mode features a multiplier that increases the amount of bolts you collect. The more enemies you kill without getting hit, the higher your multiplier will get, making defensive weapons like the shield charger a requirement. You can make all of the bolts you unlock worth up to 20 times their original value. Now this is absolutely necessary when trying to purchase expensive items like the Rhino 2, the Zodiac, or the Carbonox armor. Plus, you're going to need these bolts to get the ultra versions of your earlier weapons. That's right, those weapons that you already upgraded can get even stronger. And when you buy those ultra weapons, you're going to have to level them up again. That means more switching of weapons and even more varied gameplay. I felt like I was always switching things up. And with the constant rewards and the weapon leveling system, I never wanted to put the game down. Even after upgrading and collecting everything in the game, I still wanted to play this game more. Ratchet and Clank Going Commando is a masterclass in addictive gameplay design, and it deserves to be put in a museum.
When a game rewards the player as they play, there usually isn't a completion bonus at the end. But I'm glad to say that this is not the case with Ratchet & Clank going Commando. If you collect and upgrade every single weapon in the game, you will gain access to the Insomniac Museum through the shortcut sections of the special menu. Now in the Insomniac Museum, you'll enter into a room modeled after the Insomniac offices. Each exhibit features an intro by one of the developers as well as various things that have been cut from Going Commando and the original Ratchet & Clank. There is so much stuff here and all of it is incredible. You can design your own effects for the game, check out different game testing areas, and even pilot old vehicles. This is the type of thing that makes completing games so rewarding. You can tell from this how much the creators really loved making the game they were working on. But maybe you don't want to get this by actually completing the game. Don't worry, you can also access the Insomniac Museum by going to the fountain in Silver City, Boldan at 3 a.m. You know, because you're an insomniac. Get it? But why wouldn't you want to complete this game? The minor tweaks that were made on the original, plus the weapon leveling system, make this one of the best games I've completed in a while. I am happier having played this game, and I absolutely think you should too, if given the chance. When I completed Ratchet and Clank going Commando, there were about 39 deaths, almost all of them in my first playthrough because I was going in blind. 30 skill points figured out, mainly by looking at the trophy list, but there were still some pretty fun challenges. 24 weapons bought and upgraded, including the Gadgetron weapons from Ratchet and Clank 1. 40 Platinum Bolts discovered. Now these were always a treat to look out for and forced me to explore each level along with the 10 Nanotech boosts. 33 hours of total playtime and 13,483,000 regular bolts spent at least. This is only including weapons, armor, and gadgets, and doesn't account for ammo refuel or bolts needed to progress in the story. That's a lot of bolts. Ratchet and Clank Going Commando is everything a sequel should be. It makes minor tweaks on the original, creating what I would almost consider to be a perfect game. The platforming and the firefights are very fun, the different worlds are amazing, and it constantly rewards you. Not to mention it has one of the best completion bonuses ever. If you like platformers at all, you owe it to yourself to complete this game. So, with that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Complete It. Complete It!